to take this opportunity to thank this group. When they shut the museum down in 97, we had a lot of boys looking for connections. And, and some of you lads, of course, were volunteers at, at, at the museum. And you're nice enough to extend your invitation to us. And we all, speaking for every Navy man here and every Marine, uh, we really appreciate it. It's actually, as far as I'm concerned, it's the highlight of the week. So thanks again. Uh, I'll cut this short because I think we're pretty well into it. But uh, some of the amusing things that happen uh, during service years, I can remember uh, I started with a National Guard when I was a junior in high school. And uh, in those times, they didn't have that, those brogans that they have today. They had nice shiny leather shoes. And I didn't have a chance to break them in before I find myself up at Camp Ripley for two weeks of training in the middle of July and dragging a machine gun with uh, ammunition and water and whatever over Hill and Dale. And after about a week of this, I had blisters about the size of half a dollar. And uh, the top gun, Mush Reynolds, says, you're done with this routine, Murphy. I thought, slick. I'll probably get a desk job or something. And it didn't turn out quite that well. I ended up in the honey wagon, <laughs> which I, I collected garbage for a week. So I figured there's got to be a better way to do it than this. So a good friend of mine was in the Naval Air Reserve. So I, uh, I got a discharge from the guards. And Mush Reynolds, who was the top kick, said, Murphy, you're about the luckiest bugger in the world. When your orders came through at, at uh, 9 o'clock in the morning uh, for your discharge, uh, the orders came through at 1.30 in the afternoon that all enlistments will be frozen. I mean, no more discharges. And it wasn't uh, within a year or so that they organized that group and sent them down to, has anybody ever heard of Camp Claiborne in Louisiana? God. Well, they used these troops to set that thing up and rattlesnakes and alligators and mosquitoes and God. And when they finished with that deal, they shipped them all to Africa. I don't think there's three guys left in the whole outfit. But uh, anyway, uh, I ended up in the in the reserve, and uh, I was called to do active duty in May of '39. And when I reported aboard the Naval Air Station, uh, there were 28 officers enlisted men on duty. Now, as an apprentice seaman, I was making $21 a month, but they had no quarters for us and no chow, so we do per diem, which I think was $79 a month. And I was living at home. God, I was, uh, I was the richest kid in town. But I needed transportation, so I bought an old 29, 1929 Harley Davidson for 25 bucks. I used that for transportation, getting back and forth before they finally got quarters for us. Well, it turned to be out to be a blessing in disguise because as an apprentice seaman, all I did was swap decks, ship paint, paint, and God only knows anything else they could think of doing. But I was the only one aboard that knew how to run the motorcycle. In our uh, fire department at that time, we had two fire trucks from the Minneapolis Fire Department stationed out there to take care of the field and also residences in, in South Minneapolis. And the Navy's contribution was a 1930 Harley Davidson with a sidecar that held two 100-pound CO2 cylinders. And Ben Berg was a fireman that used to ride on the back end. So whenever that alarm went off, man, I was wide open. And that new hangar, that, or that big hangar they got out there was under construction. And the fire supposedly was in this hangar. And Ben and I kept swinging around that thing and go screaming into the hangar. It had a bunch of boots in there with mops and pails that were swabbing down the decks. And I hit that slippy surface and that motorcycle just took off. God, there were mops and boots and pails flying all over the place. So I got some extra duty tied in with that one. But uh, I learned one thing in the Navy. I think you're looking at the only idiot that ever put a leading chief in the Navy on report. <laughs> oh. I was on guard duty, and uh, the executive officer had talked to the troops saying that somebody's stealing Navy gas because the number of hours that we're flying doesn't equate with the consumption rate. So 
you boys on guard, be alert. Like, I just, I think it was my first week I was aboard, and I've got this uh, guard duty in the afternoon. It's a beautiful fall day, and uh, here's the chief, oh, Chief Doe, with his old Ford back up to the gas pit, filling up his, and I'm shocked. Leading chief. I said, Chief, you're stealing gas. And he's got a cigar butt sticking out of his face. Yeah. I go, Chief, I'm going to have to put you on report. He looked at me, oh, well, you know your duty. So I put in my report. The next morning, the executive officer called me in, and the chief sitting there with his hat cocked back in his head with a cigar butt sticking out of his face. He said, uh, Sailor, is this uh, report correct? I said, yes, sir. That's all. Yes, sir. And as I walk out the door, I hear him say, you know, Chief, you're, you're setting a very poor example for these young men. <laughs> yeah. Well, Christ, it wasn't three minutes and through the loudspeaker system, Murphy reported to the Chief's quarters. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I had that duty uh, cleaning the Chief's quarters for, I don't know, four months before Flood Kenster got in trouble. And uh, actually, it was, <laughs> it was a... Uh, a lot of fun and a lot of laughs, and I, I hope I live long enough. I never had so much fun in my life as I did in the Navy. I, I wouldn't have traded a minute of, 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 from one end of the fence to the other. I had a lot of fun, did a few stupid things in my life, but I hope I live long enough to see him pass a law requiring two years of active duty for every man and woman by the age of 18 or old. And I, I, think, I think our country. I think our country needs it. And like I say, that's one thing that I'd, I'd like to live long enough to see. That's about it for the time, guys. Thanks, thanks so much.